Hello and welcome to a beginner series for V-Ray Pro Houdini, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find and navigate V-Ray specific UI elements, which will help you get started with V-Ray. Take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description so you can play with the scene in your own time. Now, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is to add the V-Ray toolbar to the shells. To do so, simply click on this plus icon, then hover over Shelves, and then you will find V-Ray near the bottom of the screen. Simply click on it, and the toolbar will be added. The V-Ray toolbar is designed to give you quick access to frequently used tools, settings, and objects. Simply clicking on one of these buttons will open custom windows, settings, or add objects to the scene. Clicking on Render or IPR buttons will start either production or interactive rendering respectively. Doing so will also open the V-Ray frame buffer, which you can also do by clicking on this Show VFB icon located next to the IPR button. The V-Ray frame buffer has three distinct sections that contain different types of settings that you can use to manipulate the image after it's been rendered. The first section that we're going to take a look at is the History section, which is located to the left. In this particular example, I saved a couple of times while working, and you can see the thumbnails of the renders. Clicking on any of these will load them into the middle section, which is the Frame Buffer window. This window will allow me to see the combined result of all the render elements, which we also call the Beauty. Additionally, I can also choose which render element I would like to examine. In this case, I will simply click on this RGB color drop-down and select the lighting. If I want to go back, I can simply click on this RGB color again, and I will go back to the beauty. I can also view each color channel separately by clicking on these colored dots. Clicking on this disk icon will save the current channel. I can also use these two icons to focus the render around the cursor or in the render region. This next icon is exactly the same as the IPR button in the shelf. It will start IPR rendering. There's also another one, which is a duplicate of the render button, that will start production rendering. This last section of the frame buffer contains the layer stack. Here you'll find layers for color corrections, as well as effects like denoising, lens effects, and so on. You can also do simple compositing here or light mixing, which is something that we're going to take a closer look at in future videos. Unlike the History panel, there are multiple tabs here that we can click on. The Stats and Log tabs will give you information about the rendering process while that's going on. This is useful for debugging purposes. Let's go back to the V-Ray shelf. The next group of buttons will add properties to cameras and objects. These are V-Ray specific properties that V-Ray will use in render time. The Cosmos button will open this Cosmos browser window, which will give you access to assets, HDRI backgrounds, and materials. As you can see, the assets are arranged in different categories to make it easier for users to find what they need. If we click on this vegetation button, we can find all the assets that are tagged as vegetation. This includes trees, grass, flowers, and much more. As you can see, there are a ton of assets that you can go through. To make it easier to find what you need, we've also added functionality for filtering. If you click on this Filter button, you can choose how to filter your assets. You can do so by color, space, surface, or sort by date added or most popular. For example, I can click on this urban tag, and that will filter my assets. I can enhance my filtering by using another one. This time, I will filter by color. I will click on this orange color, and that will only show me the orange assets. When I find something that I like, I can simply click on this blue icon, and the asset that I have selected will be downloaded on my local machine. If I want to see all of the downloaded assets, I can simply click on this cloud icon and then select Download It. This will give me a list of all the assets that I've downloaded, and I can simply click on this green icon that appears to import the asset into the scene. 
All of the trees that are used for this example are downloaded through the Cosmos browser. Going back to the V-Ray shelf, the next two buttons that you see are used to import materials from files and caches from Phoenix. Phoenix is a plugin that we have for 3ds Max and Maya, and it's used to generate effects such as fire, smoke, oceans, and much more. The next group of buttons create light sources in the scene. Simply clicking on any one of these will create a specific light source that you can use for lighting your scene. If we expand the shelf a little bit, we'll find the last button, which opens the V-Ray Light Lister. The V-Ray Light Lister gives you easy access over commonly used settings for lighting. Some of these settings gives you control over the color and the intensity of the lights. You can also find some other simple settings in here that you can use to control your lights and isolate them in IPR. This is something we're going to explore further in future videos. Using the shelf is not the only way to create V-Ray lights in Houdini. You can navigate to the network view, right-click, and find the V-Ray section. Here you can find all the possible light types that you can create that V-Ray can render. Going into another context, like the material or shop context, will give you access to materials, textures, displacement, and some other nodes of a similar type. To make it easy for new users to learn how to make materials, or simply save time and use preset materials, we have a material library that ships for free with V-Ray. To enable it, you need to go to Edit, Preferences, Rendering, and then click on the V-Ray checkbox. Then simply click on Accept, and this will enable the materials in the material palette. Simply click on it, and from the render, choose V-Ray. This will give you a list of all the materials in the material library, which are all categorized and ready to use. You can select and apply these materials in your scene. As you've probably realized by now, the V-Ray nodes are context sensitive, exactly like the Houdini nodes. So if we go into another context, like the out context, we will find the render operators, or ROPs for short. These nodes contain V-Ray settings, environment overrides, render channels, and much more. In other words, everything related to rendering. If we go to the V-Ray Renderer ROP, you can see all of the V-Ray settings here. There's another way to bring up the V-Ray settings, and this is by going back to the shelf and clicking on ROP parameters. This will bring up another window, and here you'll find the same settings that you'll find in the out context. Let's quickly go over some of the tabs that you see here. The Images tab contains all of the settings that are used to save the files after rendering. The Renderer tab contains subtabs that contain core V-Ray settings, grouped by relevancy. For example, the Sampler tab groups settings that control the quality of the final render. Some of the other tabs also contain subtabs of their own. There's lots of settings here that we're going to go through in a future video. The V-Ray default settings work great in most cases, so there's no need to understand any of this to start reusing V-Ray. Another interesting tab is the Effects tab. This tab contains settings for V-Ray specific effects, like Aerial Perspective and Sphere Fade. The Objects tab is unique to V-Ray and Houdini. Here you will find object settings and material overrides. The main purpose of this tab is to give you the ability to select which objects you would like to render. The star symbol means that V-Ray will render all objects as candidate objects, meaning that it will respect the Houdini visibility and render flags. You can also force V-Ray to render objects and lights that are not even visible in the viewport. The Houdini ROP environment is unique, and V-Ray is integrated in a way that takes full advantage of its capabilities. One very powerful characteristic of this environment is that you can create multiple V-Ray render ROPs that can contain completely different lights, settings, objects, cameras, materials, and more. Then, you can use the deadline node to submit the render jobs to your local farm. Or, if you don't have one, you can also use our Chaos Cloud rendering service to render everything. You can also use your local machine to render. 
Clicking on this Render to Disk button will start production rendering. By now, you should have learned enough to be able to start rendering with V-Ray. Make sure you take a look at the rest of the videos from our Getting Started series, or click on our blog and documentation for more product tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you soon.